Good afternoon and welcome to my message of the day. I'm Warren, the rector here at St Columbus. One of the joys of being a parish priest is the opportunity I have to talk to lots of people about the deeper things of life, both in their life and in our life together, in our life together as human beings and as a community. Sometimes though you meet people who aren't actually interested in talking about the deeper things of life. In actual fact, they want to convince me that there is no nothing deeper in life. Uh, this would be atheism. You get the, the uh, evangelical atheist, so to speak. There is no good news. It's all bad news. And what they often say is something like, religion is a crutch. It's avoiding the reality about the, the real truth about life, which is that it's meaningless. Uh, we're a little speck in the ocean of a vast, cold universe. Uh, no one cares. There is nothing that is meaningful uh, unless you want to make it so. It's a completely nihilistic view uh, that there is nothing really worthwhile unless you want to make it so. That sounds like a crutch to me. I might get back to that, to actually just believe that uh, it sounds like a crutch. But anyway, they usually start with me with that idea that religion is a crutch, that if we were honest about reality, we'd give religion up. Um, of course, they, they want to say that they do have values. It's just that they are a human concoction, that they are, for whatever reason, people take on values. Uh, you could ask the question, where do they come from? And then an atheist might say, well, actually, they have the values that are most worthwhile. Uh, even listen to that language, worthwhile, by what standard? But anyway, the, they'll say something like, the values that are most worthwhile have an evolutionary explanation. So it helped the species survive by holding on to these values and making these values stronger in the community. So, for instance, compassion, to show compassion to each other has a, a evolutionary benefit to the species. So what they're trying to get at is there is that there is no actual inherent meaning in it. It's just good for the survival of the species. But actually, if you think about it, the most important values, human values, require more than evolutionary benefit to really be the kind of value that we think is valuable. You take something like compassion. Compassion is about show, giving up your, your self-interest for the interest of another. But actually, if we're just doing that to, for the species to uh, be for, for the benefit to the species, then in a way it's, it's sort of like Richard Dawkins' selfish, selfish gene. It's something that undercuts in the very activity of the value, there's something that undercuts the value itself. Then they might say something like, well, actually, these values which we find worthwhile are innate. Oh, well, um, that sounds a lot like the beginning of a transcendence to me. And note to all atheists, they should avoid at all costs transcendence or anything that's innate and therefore independent like have an independent value that are true and good in themselves because that's what faith says. So you're on the path, you're on the trajectory towards religion, faith. So you should avoid that if you're an atheist. But of course, it's very hard to avoid that. They might then flip and say something about, well, hang on, hang on. Um, They'll, they'll use the scientific method. You know, if you can't fit it, I'm going to put it bluntly, you know, a bit of a caricature. If you can't stick it in a test tube, it doesn't exist. And God, you can't prove God scientifically. You can't stick God in a test tube. You can't use the hard sciences to prove God or make any sense of God. Uh, the idea of God is not falsifiable. Therefore, God does not exist. It's sort of like a scientific reductionism, reducing life down to the, to the test tube. Um, 
Well, actually, it's, it's a funny thing to say that, isn't it? Because the scientific method itself wouldn't demand that we reject a supernatural God. Uh, the scientific method, by its own definition, looks at what is natural. So the scientific method itself wouldn't demand us giving up God or an inquiry into God. Um, you, you might make the decision, oh, I'm not going to, to, to believe in such a, a God because I believe if you can't stick it in a test tube, it doesn't exist. But you see, it's a belief. Yeah, OK, well, that's fair enough. But that's not demanded by the scientific method itself. Then, then someone might say, an atheist might then say, well, hang on, okay, even so, even if there is a God, if you can't, if you can't be proven and worked by the scientific method, by the hard sciences, then it's not worth worrying about. Um, you don't have to worry. You shouldn't even ask the questions about whatever you think God's about, all these values, all this kind of thing. You should just stick to the hard sciences. Well, that sounds like a crutch to me because I started this conversation with the atheist saying that I was, I was hanging on to the crutch to avoid reality. Well, that sounds like, like the, the, uh, atheist, the atheist is avoiding deeper questions by hanging on to a very narrow little view of the world, which is, of course, what they accuse someone like me of doing. I think this is... This is one of the great ironies of atheism, that they start with a critique of religion saying it's too narrow and a crutch, and so often end up showing themselves to be narrow and hanging on to a crutch. Uh, now, at that point, normally the person gets it. And I don't stick the knife in or anything and twist it round at all or anything like that. It's enough for them to know that there's more going on here than they think. Thanks for listening.